Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning and welcome to the course introduction to interaction design. In the previous uh, lecture, we had seen affordances and animations that how the interface should speak to the user that how it is to be used and we also saw that how animations add a very interesting feature to our uh, application or the website on the digital uh, screen. So, today we will look into the component based design systems where we will see that how the components are designed so that the whole system can then be unified. So, we will also be looking at some of the work of uh, Brad uh, Frost who is a designer and a developer and we will take some of the inspirations from his uh, book Atomic Design and also certain philosophy that uh, he follows here. So, now, we have been used to you know reading books, we have had books for many many centuries and so there is a certain way in which we utilize these books because they have certain pages. So, to get to the next information, next page we turn the page and then it offers us a new information which could also be an image or some new text, but when we started to work to develop the web. So, the same sort of information or knowledge was embedded into this particular field as well because when we talk about web pages like I said we call it web pages. We also think about how long will be uh, my home page or how many pages are there. So, we are still uh, thinking of it in terms of the pages. So, but in the digital world where we are right now we are using uh, products like the mobile phone, iPad, PCs which all have a very different uh, configuration and the browser sizes are different, the input methods are different. So, our past learning has certain limitations. So, we need to work on this particular area in a very uh, different way which suits the particular application. because the way we are used to designing pages. So, that will not really work in this particular domain. Now, so we have to ask when we are uh, talking about this area that what is it that we understand from the UI that we are designing. So, what is it we understand from the this interaction that we are talking about. So, bootstrap is a popular HTML uh, framework for developing projects on the web. So, it has certain advantages, it is uh, easy to work with and it has a lot of applications, but it also has certain drawbacks in terms of the UI being almost the same. So, for example, now we have so many different uh, applications, web applications, also websites. So, if for example, Amazon, Flipkart, Nike, all of these use the same sort of language then it would become quite monotonous and boring for the user to interact with them. So, that is where the limitation is, but it does offer us a, a good framework. Now, this brings us to uh, maybe the next step that we want to customize uh, for our particular requirement or need. So, now for this we require to we are required to make certain style guides which we have around us. So, there are many of these online uh, style guides that one can use to create their work further and there are pattern libraries. So, they help in giving a cohesion, they give sort of a uniformity to the work because in the pattern uh, library we have certain uh, patterns in certain for example, starting with the color and other icons and other things. So, now they make it consistent also they make the testing more accessible and the performance is easier because now there is a sort of a shared vocabulary when it comes to our particular uh, design. So, at the same time the 
pattern uh, library can be uh, using it can be a time uh, consuming process because even after we have a pattern library we have to make that effort to incorporate it into the design so it is not doing the work as it is for the designer but the designer is required to utilize it in a certain way so that it makes sense now but where this will be finally used so uh, how will the user finally use it so that sometimes is missing so what that means is that the context in which this will be used could also be missing so in digital uh, interactions in digital systems we have to take care of certain aspects so the visual and functional consistency now the user is expecting you know something when they are interacting sometimes users get used to finding something in a certain place so the visual and functional consistency throughout our web application ensures that the user is able to navigate much more freely much more you know positively in this space so that is an important aspect next is the brand identity so the brand identity uh, also needs to be taken into account that how does it uh, come across the identity has to be maintained whether it is certain uh, icon it's a certain logo color <coughs> so that identity is maintained on the top right we can see the google material so this was sort of you know a good example of how they have put all of these things together to sort of create a visual language for the user and the user can sort of connect with it so the design language that we talk here similarly in the example on the bottom left so this is an example of a cycle uh, company and you can see that how the different colors they have come together in which the cycle is available and now they are also forming the design language of the entire website so uh, these are some important points at the same time voice and tone so you know our application may have a certain voice so this is also uh, an exercise which helps us sort of understand our application better and uh, so that we can design it better that what kind of a voice would it have but the tone is also important here so whether it is a disappointed tone whether it is a sad tone happy tone so that needs to be taken care of and how that can be brought about in the interface at the same time the writing uh, style so uh, we have also discussed earlier that how the consistent uh, style needs to be maintained if we are writing in a certain manner are we communicating that we are very uh, cheerful we are very uh, friendly or are we trying to communicate that we are very composed and we are very serious so that will also be reflected in both the voice tone and also in our writing and the pattern library so here we can see is an example of the uh, pattern library and we can see that how the color typography graphics and the button links all have a certain design uh, language and from this pattern language the designer can now pick up the important aspects and apply in their work but here uh, like i said earlier we have to note that the pattern library will need to be further used so the next steps will need to be uh, designed by the designer so they will have to be it, it will have to be given a certain form shape and certain overall uh, look in order to be a complete uh, final product so now this is an example of how the material can be used how the theme can be created so we can see here you can probably note that what types of animations you are seeing here in the last class we have talked about animation so what type of animations do you see here so this is an example of a material theming uh, that when we are designing uh, our application so you can see the different types of the buttons a different color palette here at the same time uh, here we can see now color in two ways so this is my button now on button there is a text so the button is represented by the number 2 uh, and the text or the icon with number 1 so we can see at the bottom here that what is my primary and what is my secondary so the primary is number 1 which is the base color and on primary we have white so on that blue we have then the white icons and text so this is how one is sort of preparing the design or creating putting it together 
also typography. So, the type of font we are using, the style of font, uh, the, the number as well, if there is any Roman numeral or any other numeral is there, even the icon that will go with our typography. So, these aspects and also uh, like the shape. So, we can see there are two buttons here. So, both have a different shape, one is rectangle, another is uh, hexagon and uh, how with the color and with the shape all together with the typography put together, how it will give a very different uh, look. So, one button can be used for a certain function, the other can be used for a different function. So, maybe like for example, here for showing results, we have a solid button, but for press enter, we have button with an outline. So, all these iterations can be made. So, now when we talk about uh, design system, because we are looking at the component uh, design. So, and how these components will be put together to form a certain system. So, it makes it easy for the designer to sort of maintain the same approach uh, throughout and uh, the thought process is in a very systematic manner. So, now advantages are that uh, this provides consistency because like I mentioned, if from the initial point we are sure about the color palette we are using, the different shapes what will be the different shapes assigned for or the texture or any other element is assigned for, then it helps in the consistency of the design of the particular application. A shared vocabulary, so the whole design will be sort of uh, will come together seamlessly as a one particular design example. It will not be disintegrated, it will not be fragmented, but it will stand together like one. So, uh, the next is education that how uh, when we follow a certain trend, a certain way of putting all of these elements together. So, how it can also communicate to the user that what to expect and uh, not to be surprised. Then we have the empathetic workflow that how when they are all put together, it has a certain flow, uh, an organic flow or a structural flow the way we want it to be. And uh, this also makes the whole experience or the whole work process very efficient. Uh, this is also very efficient when it comes to testing because now we have a particular uh, system, we can break it down into further smaller modules and we can then test those modules more effectively. And then we can also see that whether they are kind of connected or they are breaking apart somewhere. Then the speed as well, because the speed at which we can now access it becomes very fast as compared to if we were to focus on an application which was fragmented. Another uh, thing that it also helps us is if we can always go back to our smaller elements. So, the along with the user, the designer can also sort of educate themselves in the way that they can go back to where they feel during the testing phase for example, that something needs to be redone and then they can come back to it. So, now in the digital world like I discussed where we have the iPad and uh, other uh, such flat screens where uh, pages uh, really are not really as useful as they are in a conventional uh, book. So, we have to ask that what is this UI made of. Now, here we can see that how we can build a reusable component system. So, reusable component uh, system will allow the user to reuse some of those elements and not uh, start from the scratch. So, now we come to the uh, section where we will see that how we can build these components to sort of build a system and some of uh, this has been inspired from the book by Brad Frost atomic design. So, atomic design principle basically is inspired from chemistry uh, for Brad, where there are atoms which combine together to form molecules and then organisms and so on. So, how this particular knowledge can be utilized when we talk about the interfaces. So, this is what it is all about and we can see that the first uh, is the atom. So, creating the atom. Now, atom is something that is the smallest element which cannot be broken down any further 
and by themselves they may not be very useful. So, for example, we have any say a label or any kind of input or a button. So, by themselves they may not be really uh, functional, but when they are put together in a larger uh, system say the molecule, then it is when they will sort of become very usable. So, they are the most basic building uh, blocks uh, in the universe also and here in our uh, UI as well. And uh, through these atoms when we put them together we can form larger blocks, uh, larger elements which look like the molecules. So, talking about atoms now color is also can be considered to be an atom because it cannot be broken down any further. So, here we can see three examples that how the different color scheme is applied on our prototype on our uh, low fidelity uh, prototype. And uh, so, all three uh, we can see sort of give a different type of feeling and for the purpose of this example we have selected the color palette at the bottom of the screen. So, we will take a look at some of the examples which we have created with this. So, here we can see some of the other uh, atoms like the button for example. On the top we can see there is an arrow button. So, it is a particular button then we also see that there is another button which says age and state. So, of course, when it is selected so it is uh, colored when it is not selected it is ghosted as you can see the state is ghosted. At the same time even the icons that we see here the setting people calendar or home. So, they are also falling in the category of the atom. Now, coming to the uh, molecule. So, molecule uh, you know uh, are formed when the atoms are combined. So, the label we saw earlier here. So, now we can see that how these will come together. So, the label, the input field, the search they were all independent, but now when they have come together. So, they have sort of formed a molecule wherein now uh, we know this is the search tab where we have to enter a keyword and then we have to uh, press the search button in order to search. So, this is another example of the molecule the system bar. So, we can see that the time and certain other icons are there which form the system bar and also the search bar with that icon of search as well. Then we come to organisms. Now, uh, these are when our molecules are sort of put together in a certain uh, framework. So, for example, the header or the footer of a website or an application. So, every uh, every website or application has a header and a footer. So, we can see that how now this particular unit of the molecule has fit itself into the header or even the this navigation bar that we see on the right side of the screen. So, another example of the organism is when we see a web page like this where we have these molecules which we see as squares all put together to form a larger organism. The next we have is a, a template and a template is when different organisms are put into the structure. So, this is not the final output yet there is still another step uh, remaining, but this is when we are putting all our organisms into a structure and uh, they are organized according to an underlying layout and then it becomes a template. So, we see that we have a rough template here. So, we know that some text will be here, some images will come somewhere uh, right and now we are getting into the language of our deliverable because now they are all coming together to form a certain language that we are foreseeing for our particular application. So, we are looking at the image width we can see here that we are deciding upon the image width, the, the heights, the uh, character lengths of our titles if we have any. So, all of these uh, things we are figuring out. So, we are looking at it as if it is right now a skeleton of our future application. So, here we can see uh, another example that in this particular skeleton we have the organism, the molecule and again another organism in the bottom. So, we can see that how when we are 
combining these atoms into molecules and then into organisms that in our uh, website or our application we can then identify that which is now a molecule which is still in the state of an atom or has it become a molecule or now is it an organism. So, we can see that uh, growth in our application. Then next and finally, we come to the pages. So, we are now taking the uh, content that we are creating for our final application and putting on to the skeleton. So, we are uh, in a way pouring the real representative content into the skeleton then that we had created earlier. So, this is important because what users will interact with. So, we have to uh, see that. So, they will interact with what uh, first and for this we can use also the eye tracking and other techniques that where will the user see first. So, we have discussed those also. So, keeping all those in mind when we are putting this into the skeleton. So, we will also consider the flow of the activities, the hierarchy of the activities which this particular atomic design really helps the designer in creating that certain hierarchy. So, now we need to check whether this is functional. We have to check whether it is a uh, uh, functional or if it is not then do we go back to the atomic level and rework on some of the lacuna that may be there. So, we have to check how strong is our skeleton and how strong is our uh, pattern that we are making and the atoms that are all put together to create this. Now, this also gives us the opportunity to test the various templates when we come to this stage and uh, also to test and see that which particular template works uh, to the best of our advantage. Now, here we can see when all of these are put together. So, an example of the pages that how our interface will look like especially during a certain task that we are performing. Now, this particular a page here uh, shows that different stages. So, in the atom stage we started with the color, we started with the typography and other such basic elements. In the molecule stage how we combine these atoms to form larger elements. Uh, still further in uh, the organism stage we further combine them to sort of create a stronger uh, design language and then the template which is the skeleton phase and then finally, when we are adding all the relevant information to form the pages. So, this is uh, we can see the step by step uh, process here and at any stage one can always go back to the even to the atomic level and make some uh, changes if required. So, that it reflects in the final work if that is what we see. So, now this particular strategy uh, gives us certain advantages. So, like component based thinking. So, now since we are thinking about the component level here and these components are then being put together uh, to form larger components. So, we are not missing out on the even the most basic small elements. So, we are taking care of the smallest of the elements. Then scalability and flexibility. So, once this uh, our template is ready we have prepared our hierarchy. There is always a possibility to scale it up or scale it down according to our requirement. So, consistency is maintained like we saw that we will not deviate from our structure. So, we there is certain hierarchy that we are following through and this will allow us to maintain consistent design. The visual language, the design language will remain consistent throughout, it will not deviate from that. It allows for the cross function and collaboration. So, basically it allows the team members and also the other stakeholders to sort of uh, come together and uh, uh, like we saw earlier that how the testing also can be performed in a better uh, manner here using this particular hierarchy of functions. Uh, design cohesion where the design has a structure, it has a certain uh, pattern, certain language that it follows. So, everything all starting from the atom to the molecule and further everything has the same sort of cohesive uh, language. And finally, we have the iterative uh, development 
which is that it is an iterative process. We know that design is an iterative process and how this uh, particular technique can keep that process in motion, so that one can always uh, go back, modify and then come up with a, a better design. So, this brings us to the end of this uh, particular course introduction to interaction design and uh, I hope you all could take some insights from this course and uh, also I hope that you enjoyed this course as much as I enjoyed uh, preparing it and presenting it in front of you all. So, uh, some of you will probably also be appearing for the exams uh, soon. So, if you have any queries, if there are any questions, please uh, do contact us. We will try to address them to the best of our you know ability and uh, uh, wish you all the very best for your upcoming exams. So, thank you and bye.